Hey guys, it's Darkenstein here from Lunash Academy. I'm still in my dark laboratory because today I'll be showing you guys how to manage your farms and to breed like scientists. But before we reveal the secrets of my lab, woohoo that like button and subscribe for more quality content. But be warned, if you're a beginner, I recommend you check out some of the earlier breeding videos before watching this one, as we'll be going over some very advanced topics. So if you watched our earlier video, you should now know how to pick and choose breeder axes, and we all should have a good understanding of the true probabilities of breeding. But that isn't enough. Here are the five most common mistakes I always see breeders make. Number one, choosing the wrong number of times to breed. Many of my junior breeders always ask me how many times they should breed. Three, four, five, six. And my answer always depends because the margins are always different per build. I sometimes see breeders not maximizing their potential by either breeding too little or screwing up and breeding too much. I always recommend to check the average cost to breed. It's not hard to make an Excel sheet or even use a tool like chillaxi.com to calculate the average cost per breed. I then take this number and compare it to how much I could sell each axi that hatches. If my average cost is lower, then it's justifiable to breed that many number of times. I know that four breeds have a higher margin per axis, but you also need to factor in the increased probability, which you know is a big contributing factor, and the overall net profit because the margin may be greater for each individual axi, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the net profit is greater. Quantity is also larger, which will have a great effect on your net profit. The second most common mistakes I see my fellow breeders make is cheaping out on breeder axes, especially during the early phases of your breeding farm. I always see individuals unwilling to pay the 0.4 to 0.7 ETH premium for a high 95 to 100% breeder instead of opt for a 0.2 to 0.3 ETH 90% axi breeder, even though they can afford the actual pricier ones. A couple days later and they are left with morphing a batch of axes that sell at the floor and result in either a loss or a net profit of zero. If you can't afford the good breeders for a given comp, then maybe it's wiser to opt into a cheaper, lower margin axi build. The third most common mistake I see breeders make is trying to expand too fast. When starting off as a breeder, your initial goal is to clean out your gene pool so that you are breeding high purity axes. Don't try to get to 20 axes as fast as you can. Take it slow and reinvest your profits to buy better breeders until you're at the point where you are breeding 99s and 100s. What ends up happening is that you soon end up with a bunch of impure axes that would just pump out floor axes for you if you try to expand too quickly. This is how many people end up losing their money doing axie breeding. Remember, slow and steady will win you the race 100%. The fourth most common mistake I see are when breeders try to do too much at once. Never pivot or diversify your breeding operation if your initial farm has not surpassed 16 eggs or otherwise known as four chains. You really want to ensure your first operations are sustainable and have some cushioning to them in case of a bad batch. Lastly, the worst mistake I currently see my fellow breeders make is to salvage bad batches. This is especially common if you're breeding a very staple common build. If you get a 96% axi and the rest of your gene pool is in the 99% range, you do not want to be breeding with that axi. Don't get me wrong though, I definitely think 96% axes are breedable, but if the axes in the rest of your farm are significantly better, then you would simply be doing yourself a disservice by breeding at a lower margin and potentially lowering the quality of your overall farm as you pollute your gene pool. Hot new, what are you going to do? Just sell that lower purity off to the market, buy nicer breeders, and you will never want to look back. It's the hardest decision for most breeders, even the veterans. Hopefully by now, you should have a good understanding of the do's and don'ts of breeding. But wait, how does one manage their farms properly after many generations of breeding? Well, I'm glad you asked. There are actually four steps to every breeding operation, regardless of the build. Phase one is when you are just starting off in the build. This is the step where you choose which axes you want to breed and you go purchase your parent breeders. This can be an ABC farm or an ABCD farm, whatever you want to start out. 
Ideally, you would be purchasing 95% plus axes, but I know that money doesn't grow off trees, so it's understandable if you're using slightly dirtier jeans. Now that you have four parents and you have your four or five eggs and you've started up your breeding farm, you are now at phase two. It is now important that you prioritize improving your farm's gene pool. This is called the purification phase. Sell all the bad batches, focus on using profits to buy purer breeders, and during the step, you always want to pair your best breeders with each other to maximize the odds of getting a very spicy batch. Repeat the steps as many times as you need with four parents until you have reached the point where you are now breeding a 100% with another 100%. Congratulations, you have now bred your first one hundo. This is now the end of your phase two and now you are reaching into phase three where your main goal is to maintain the purity while focusing on expanding in size. This is the expansion phase. Reinvest all profits into expanding the farm by adding one chain at a time. This must be done without sacrificing your gene pool though. So don't expand too quickly. Once you have 16 eggs, all of which are extremely pure in the 95 plus region, you have now established yourself a fully sustainable breeding farm. You have reached phase four. You are an official breeder at this point. Now you have many options available to you. You can continue to grow your farm, take out profits, diversify your portfolio by breeding other builds, or even start creating scholarships. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the breeder cycle. You can repeat the cycle endlessly for any kind of build. The process is the same regardless of what you're breeding. Bonus tip as well, if some of you guys are looking to diversify, always try to focus on builds that complement your current breeds. If you're breeding backliners, try to breed something else like midliners and frontliners. This will give you options to make scholarships as well. Always try to give yourself as much flexibility as possible when it comes to breeding operations. If you can repeat this four step process, you will be able to breed profitably no matter which build you're breeding. Rise, my fellow scientists, it's time to breed and you do not want to be missing out on these juicy opportunities.